morning. I'm hoping to talk to you today about screen limits and racism protests, and I promise that they will connect. <laughs> so uh, this week, past week, was the first webinar in our Parenting in Place Masterclass series, which was wonderfully attended, and thank you so much for all the support uh, for the people who registered, and then 1,000 plus who actually showed up live, which was amazing. And one of the questions we didn't get to was um, how to manage screen time and screen limits. Um, someone had posted, you know, my son's on for two hours of TV and maybe another two or three hours of video games with this sort of assumption that that's too much. And this is possibly the most common question that I get at parenting talks is, okay, how do I set limits on screen time for my kids? And it's a tough one, and I think one of the reasons is that there is no single answer that categorically applies for all children who are three, or all kids who are eight, or all girls who are 14, right? You really need to know your own child. And um, the thing to look at is not so much their age or their demographics, but what is the impact that you see happening with the current screen rules that you have? And then the second really important point is how to come to an agreement with them. Because it's not enough for us as parents to say, well, I listened to this wonderful author, I went to a webinar, and these are the limits that we're gonna have at our house. We need buy-in from our kids. And even more than that, we need them to understand that we're trying to help them <laughs> to manage screens in a healthy way. Right? We're trying to form the foundation of a framework for using screens over the course of their life. And more and more as their life goes by, we're going to be turning over control to our kids. So when they are little, three or four, we're gonna give limited choices, right? It's a half hour now or a half hour later, or you can watch this PBS show or you can look at that YouTube. And as our kids get older and older, we're turning over more of that feedback and mechanism to them. So when they're five or six, we may notice that there's this little meltdown right as soon as the screens end and there's a little fighting there's a kind of thing that goes off in their brain and they're running around or they're a little bit hyper and so that's t giving us information right we don't want to demonize screen time as all categorically bad but we're going to notice okay when is it more problematic for them to use screens to stop using screens and adjust our screen limits accordingly as our kids get even older, um, you know, into their teens, which is where my kids are now, we're gonna be more and more asking them to tune into that feedback mechanism. And um, there's, there's sort of a practical side of how we set the limits. You can either pick like times of day when we do or don't use screens, or you can say an overall amount of time. You're gonna discuss with your kids, you know, what makes sense for our family? Do we have no screens at? meals, I would recommend. No screens in the kitchen altogether, which some families do. Um, no screens after a certain time of night, which I also highly recommend that everyone have a bedtime for their screens. And that goes for the parents as well as the kids, right? We, we want all of us in the family to have some wind down time without our phones, without our tablets. So our brains sort of re recover, relax, get ready for sleep. And that's modeling for our kids what a healthy use of screens is. When we come to an agreement with our children over how we're going to structure it, we always wanna include a conversation about consequences so that when we set up limits, we also account for the possibility and the likelihood that our kids are gonna violate those limits. So instead of thinking we're gonna set up the perfect screen framework and the perfect screen rules that will never be violated, understand this is a learning process. So we want there to be limits that then get violated and then kids experience the consequences. And um, I, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm gonna link to a video um, that I did for The Atlantic on the four rules of consequences, which is really helpful, a framework I learned from the Parent Encouragement Program. And now I wanna connect what's going on with um, screens and also what's going on in the world today. So one of my kids came to me really upset about a week or two ago, um, having watched a lot of videos of the violence going on in the protests over systemic racism, and in particular had seen this video of a little girl, I believe in Seattle, who was um, pepper sprayed or tear gassed by the police and was just distraught, right? And this was clearly a video that was really, really disturbing. And my kid kept saying like, how could a grown up do that to a little girl? And she was crying and really upset and in pain. And this obviously was upsetting for my child to see. And so that led into a really important conversation about 
Where are you getting information? When you start watching a video on TikTok or YouTube or that you found on Twitter, how do you assess? Is this going to disturb me to the extent that maybe I shouldn't be watching this content? And finally, we agreed on, you know, these are videos that you want to be watching when you're near your family so that you can get support, um, it, you know, if, if there is something upsetting and not too late at night. So um, it's really important right now, especially when our kids are more, um, you know, on screens because it's natural that they're going to be um, socializing and getting entertainment and learning through screens since we can't really leave our homes. But um, we really want to be there to help them process, help them more and more set those limits for themselves, and then adjust if it seems like this really isn't working, you're, you're not sleeping well, you're, the screens are replacing all these other healthy activities, then we're gonna try to come to a new agreement. Um, we set our family rules and agreements at a family meeting on a Saturdays. So sort of let it go for a week and then, then adjust. So you don't wanna be doing too much triage. Um, I'm really excited this week because um, we're building on the Parenting in Place Masterclass series and if you haven't already um, signed up, you definitely should join us uh, for the second week. You can watch the first week of the webinar and this week I'm super excited because we have a, a webinar on talking to kids about race and systemic racism with for amazing speakers. Julie Lithcott Hames is leading that. If you haven't read Real American, her memoir, it's really sort of a prose poem. It's just um, so moving and beautifully written. You can tell she has an MFA. Um, so I highly recommend that. And she'll be talking about um, a little bit about that journey and, and also race and racism. Of course, many of us know her New York Times bestselling book, How to Raise an Adult, which um, if you haven't read, you definitely should. And in it, uh, Julie's going to be sort of convening the webinar with three other speakers, Nefertiti Austin, whose memoir, Motherhood So White, I really think is just such an important addition, essential reading to understand r race and um, parenting, especially her perspective as a single adoptive mother of two and really trying to find resources on you know parents of parents of color and and found that motherhood is so white in america it's generally um the the most of the literature is by white parents and christine co who co-wrote minimalist parenting with asha dornfest who's also the co-founder of boston mamas and she's wonderfully insightful about so many topics she'll be talking as well and um, leslie areola hillenbrand who has not yet written a book, but I'm hopeful that she will. And her, um, she's a co she's the founder of Latinx Parenting, and will also help to bring that perspective of all the parents that she works with and the families that she supports. So, please join us for week two of the Parenting in Place Masterclass series. Um, if you sign up now, you'll still get the replay of the first webinar, and then you'll be able to interact live every Wednesday for the next eight weeks. So, thank you so much for watching, and hope to see you online soon.